Hey everybody, I'm CJ, and yeah, I gotta tell you, it's been a pretty wacky past couple of days uh, because of the fact that I put up a, a a video a couple of, at this point it is a couple of weeks, or a week ago, or a couple of weeks ago, something like that. It was about uh, Gail Simone, and does she know the difference between a Mary Sue and an actually well-written character? <clears throat> Or, for that matter, a Mary Sue and a self-insert, or a Mary Sue and an acting decision made by an actor. Basically, does Gail Simone even know what the fuck a Mary Sue even is? And I didn't have any real expectations of it. Um, this is a pretty small YouTube channel, so imagine my surprise when I put the video out there and, in a completely relative way that video actually gets a lot of traction. I mean, right now, my subscriber count's still pretty low, so for that reason, if you would, just go ahead, uh, like this video, comment if you've got something to say, share, etc. Uh, that really helps me out. It really helps with uh, the YouTube algorithm, makes my channel easier to find, attracts new viewers, etc., etc. So, <clears throat> anyway, so in a completely relative way, that video that I did about Gail Simone that I just kind of dashed off one morning, not long after I woke up, um, got a lot of attention. Again, totally, totally relative. I mean, there are channels out there that get several thousand or tens of thousands or even a hundred thousand views for new videos and whatnot. I'm nowhere near that level. But that video did pretty well for my little channel here. And so it's just, it, it's a weird thing. Nobody can explain it. Nobody knows why these things happen, but sometimes they do. So, I don't know. Um, kind of excited about that, actually. <laughs> so, uh, anyway. What I want to talk about today, though, now that we finally got the holiday craziness behind us, and we can finally start getting back to business a little bit, and releasing channels on a little, or releasing videos a little bit more consistently, <clears throat> came across a, a couple of tweets by somebody, I don't even know who this person is, but it was nevertheless, sometimes in life you you find a clue. You know, you, you kind of get an idea of what the other side is up to. And this is one of those times when you we are kind of getting a little bit of a window into how the SJWs think, you know, how their mind, uh, how their minds work, and what it is that that they really want. <clears throat> and the usual restriction applies to this. Don't contact anybody. Don't tweet anybody. Don't call anybody. Don't text anybody. Just leave all of these people alone. Nothing good could come from uh, contacting them or anything like that. Just leave them alone. Nevertheless, <clears throat> nevertheless, this is a, uh, it's, a pr it's a pretty big surprise, I got to tell you. Um, the purpose of this, uh, of this, uh, whole tweet thread started off with, um, it's kind of like a survivor challenge, you know, one of these franchises has to go away forever. So what's it going to be? You can pick Harry Potter, Star Wars, the MCU, or Lord of the Rings. And, <coughs> and... This guy, William Gillis, again, I don't know who this person is. I don't know any, I've never heard of him before. I don't know, I don't know anything about this person. And so that's why I say, leave him alone. Don't contact him. Don't do anything. Nevertheless, he selected Lord of the Rings, which, you know, whatever. I mean, it's a matter of opinion, I guess. Everyone has a favorite. His reasons for selecting Lord of the Rings, it's like everything with SJWs. Everything has to be politicized. And so, and not even just politicized, it has to be politicized in their direction. And so that's pretty much what we're seeing here. The uh, Harry Potter series of movies, I mean, they, they wear their politics um, pretty much on their sleeve. Uh, same thing these days, same thing with Star Wars. Um, the uh, MCU has become more and more woke as time goes by. Um, 
the MCU has. They just get a little bit more woke with every single movie. And then finally, there's Lord of the Rings. And in its original conception, you, you watch the Lord of the Rings um, films or you read the Lord of the Rings novel. There's really not there. There's really not a whole lot there to uh, politicize. I mean, I guess you can come up with a sort of a metaphor of, you know, <clears throat> a metaphor of the characters and events, the story, uh, the myth of everything. You can put that into some kind of a political metaphor. And one of those political metaphors, it could be somewhere on the right, or it could have something to do with um, conservative doctrine or, or, or just whatever else. That's not the only way of looking at it. Lots of people have come up with lots of different interpretive models for the Lord of the Rings, some of which are not even specifically political in nature. Nevertheless, it's the, it's the political possibility of the Lord of the Rings, and specifically the conservative political possibility of the Lord of the Rings that just apparently drives this guy up the wall because he says, in a surprise move, I'm going with L-O-T-R. Liberals are going to be an, uh, are, are going to be annoying, basically no matter what. There will always be a rolling. But L-O-T-R gives conservatives an ongoing excuse to be in geek circles and also helped turbocharge two decades of reactionary uh, fantasy tropes. <clears throat> interesting objections. And it's tempting to think, well, the conservative element of this isn't too big. I mean, that's really, maybe it's just that he's kind of annoyed by Lord of the Rings for whatever reason. And so what, uh, what he's really striking out at is it's not so much conservatives, although them too, but what he's really striking out against really is Lord of the Rings. And if that's, if that's how you read this tweet, man, have I got news for you. He says, in a separate tweet, a subsequent tweet, he says, the gatekeeping I believe in is conservatives are fake geeks and shouldn't be allowed in geek spaces. Anything that gives them even a sliver of refuge should be deleted from history. And then he cites Lord of the Rings, Battlestar Galactica, Warhammer 40K, Skyrim, I would be unrepentant with my time travel eraser. Now, guys, just let this thing uh, sink in for just a minute. Lord of the Rings is the granddaddy of, of modern day fantasy. All right. You don't have modern fantasy if you don't have uh, Lord of the Rings. I don't think it's inaccurate to say that J.R.R. Tolkien basically, I don't think he, I, don't, I mean, I don't know if I want to go so far as to say he created an entire genre, but he definitely defined it. If he didn't create it, and I don't know, but if he didn't create it, he certainly defined it. He perfected it. And this is one of the most seminal works in all of 20th century literature, Lord of the Rings is. Your understanding, especially of British literature, like 20th century British literature, your understanding of that is fundamentally incomplete if you don't at least talk about Lord of the Rings in passing, all right? This dumb son of a bitch would wipe all of that out just on the possibility that conservatives would derive some kind of a conservative political metaphor from that. And, I mean, honestly, I, I guess I can see how one might do that, but, you know, nevertheless... Um, I'm not going to go so far as to call Harry Potter a Lord of the Rings ripoff. I don't know if that's completely fair or accurate. I'm familiar with those arguments, you understand. But you guys need to know, in all likelihood, Harry Potter as we know it would not exist if not for Lord of the Rings. But this guy, William Gillis, he's not going to stop there. Not only does he want to get rid of Lord of the Rings, he also wants to get rid of Battlestar Galactica. I assume, I mean, I'm not super familiar with Battlestar Galactica, but... I assume he means OG uh, Battle, Battlestar Galactica. So if that's true, that means the what I hear is a more woke uh, uh, reboot of Battlestar Galactica from 2003 or 2004, something like that. That more woke reboot would not exist. Uh, he wants to get rid of Warhammer 40K. 
which I'm not a big expert on Warhammer, but my understanding is, yeah, it basically is fascism in space, you know, but I don't know. Star Trek is basically communism in space. So what's the difference? Uh, Skyrim, this guy basically for strictly political purposes wants to wipe or what, at least what he thinks are political purposes. He, he wants to wipe out all of these uh, beloved franchises that uh, people have just on the off chance that they might appeal to people who are somewhere to the right of Stalin, you know? Now, and then he even goes so far as to say that conservatives are fake geeks. He never goes out of his way to really, he never really goes out of his way to to justify that, uh, to explain what exactly he means by that, why he says that. He just says it, and apparently we're just supposed to believe that. Now, I look at you, you look at what some of just uh, the the most like the biggest uh, uh, comic cons in that used to exist because I don't know that cons are ever coming back. But in the unlikely event that they do, it's reasonable to think that somewhere in those those different cons. I mean, I, I don't know what the actual uh, breakdowns of it come down to, but it's probably got to be, this guy's talking about gatekeeping. It could be as much as 50%. You know, this guy is okay with uh, cons being uh, only 50% as full as they are right now, or as they were pre-COVID. Um, he's okay with comic book sales being half yet again of what they are, which at that point, they really would be dead after that. I mean, the, the uh, uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe ticket sales being half of what they are right now, which is still pretty successful, but let's face it, that is a massive drop. I mean, the amount of things that he's apparently comfortable with deleting just in the name of uh, purity, that's really staggering. That is stupefying. But nevertheless, this is the way that SJWs think. They would rather destroy something that people have enjoyed for decade upon decade rather than allow anyone who disagrees with him politically to have a hobby. All right. They say that Comics Gate is a hate movement, but it's kind of hard to stomach that whenever you see somebody basically calling for the hypothetical extinction of one of the most beloved literary works of all time. Uh, one of one of the most beloved uh, TV properties of all time in Battlestar Galactica. One of the most beloved uh, tabletop gaming, um, uh, tabletop games in uh, uh, of all time. This guy is basically calling for a pretty clean sweep of things just because, well, not even just because, just on the possibility that somebody that he disagrees with politically might enjoy that. That's sick. So, anyway, I'm CJ, and that's that. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed, comment, like, and share this video, because it really helps me out. Also, you can find me on Twitter at Cole Loves Comics.